channel. If you are new here, my name is Caitlin. I make lots of cleaning, organizational, and cooking content on this channel. I do upload a new What's For Dinner every single Sunday, so make sure you are subscribed if you don't wanna miss out on those. But without further ado, we're gonna get right into today's video. I am all about budget-friendly and family-friendly meals because I do have a toddler that I'm feeding and we live on one income, so working on a budget is very important to us. But we're gonna go ahead and get into the meals for the week. This first recipe is a Mexican tater tot hot dish. It's one of my personal favorites. It is seriously so delicious. You're gonna start by cutting up one onion. I am using a yellow onion. It looks like I'm cutting up two of them, but it was just a weird onion and it had two lobes in it, but I promise it is just one onion. And then you're just gonna be cooking the onion with a pound of lean ground beef. I do usually get ours locally. I almost always have it stocked up in the freezer. I get it from somebody that I know and it's just grass-fed beef. We really like it, it's really nice and lean. So I usually don't even need to drain the fat off, which is really, really nice. But you're just gonna make sure that all of the onions are nice and soft and that the meat is cooked all the way through. Once all of your ground beef is cooked all the way through, you're gonna be adding in one can of rinsed black beans, one can of diced tomatoes. You'll also need a can of red enchilada sauce. This is a 10 ounce can. And then you'll also need a packet of taco seasoning mix. I'm just using the Great Value brand. You can definitely make homemade if you would like, but I took the easy way out. And then you'll also need a 10 ounce bag of frozen corn. And then you're just gonna mix all of this together and heat it for probably like five or so minutes just until everything is kind of warmed up a little bit, but it will finish cooking in the oven. And then once that mixture is pretty well heated through, you're just gonna be adding in a couple of big handfuls of your family's favorite cheese. I am just using Colby Jack on this particular day. And then you'll just mix it all together and that is it for the actual mixture. And then we're gonna be pouring it into a casserole dish. And then of course, since this is a tater tot hot dish, you're just gonna place the tater tots right on top all the way across. And then you're gonna throw this into a 375 degree oven for 35 to 40 minutes. During those last five minutes, you're gonna pull it out and put a little bit of shredded cheese on top and then stick it back in until all that cheese is melted. This is seriously so delicious and one of my favorites. So this is considered a casserole, but there are two different ways that we actually eat this. My husband prefers to eat it just as a casserole, but I love putting this mixture inside of a flour tortilla. It's almost like a burrito and it is so good this way. So I would definitely say try it both ways and see what your family prefers. This sweet as honey chicken recipe is actually an old HelloFresh recipe that I got from my sister. It is so good and perfect for date night. Here you just see me cutting up a lime and I also did cut up some ginger which I totally accidentally deleted that footage but you're going to need a couple heaping tablespoons of ginger. You just want to peel it and mince it all up. So to start off you're just going to be boiling some water for the rice. 
For today's rice, I am just using some jasmine rice, but you just want to get the water boiling so that will be ready when you're ready for the chicken. I am going to be pan frying this chicken so I'm just starting off by adding a little bit of oil into a pan and letting that heat up a little bit and then I'm just adding in the chicken breasts. So this is actually two chicken breasts but I did cut them in half lengthwise so that they would be nice and thin. I definitely would recommend doing this since you don't want the chicken to be too thick or it's going to have a hard time cooking through in the pan and then you're just going to add a little bit of pepper, salt, and garlic powder on top. I would say that I pan fried this chicken for probably around five to seven minutes on each side, but it is going to depend on the thickness of your chicken. Obviously just make sure that it's cooked all the way through. And then once you flip it, add a little bit more salt and pepper to the other side. While the chicken's cooking, I mixed up my sauce. So I'm just adding a teaspoon of chicken bouillon, and then you'll need four tablespoons of honey. This adds a lot of really delicious sweetness and flavor to the sauce. And then you're also going to need two tablespoons of soy sauce. I always, always use the Kikoman brand. And then you will need two tablespoons of water as well. And then you're just going to mix it up and set this aside for a little bit later on. And then once your chicken is all done cooking, you're just going to remove it and set it onto a plate or something. Try and cover it with a lid just to keep it a little bit warm. And then into your pan, you're going to be adding a little bit of olive oil along with some minced garlic. And then you'll be also adding those couple tablespoons of ginger that I cut earlier. You're going to mix that all up and saute it for a good minute or so. And then you'll be adding in three heaping tablespoons of white wine vinegar. You're basically just going to cook this until all of that white wine vinegar is pretty much cooked all the way off. You'll basically just be left with the ginger and the garlic in the pan. Now this is where you'll be adding in the sauce that we mixed up earlier. It's the soy sauce and the honey and the water. Just let that kind of come to a simmer. And then I did just add just a little bit more soy sauce because I like it that way. But you'll just let this heat up and then we'll be adding the chicken back in. You're going to want to make sure that this chicken gets flipped over a couple times just to make sure that the glaze gets on both sides. This is seriously so good and such a flavorful chicken. I would highly recommend this recipe. For a side, I am just doing this steamer packet of fine green beans. You guys know I love these. They're just way too easy. And then to season the green beans, I am just using a little bit of butter. I would say I used probably a teaspoon, heaping teaspoon. And then I just took a couple of wedges of the lime, squeezed that on top with a little bit of salt and pepper. And then to plate this up, you're just going to be serving it over the rice. So go ahead and put your rice on the bottom, chicken on top with a little bit of that sauce and then the green beans on the side. This is seriously, this was definitely my favorite for the week. So if you want to try one of these recipes, make it be this one. It is seriously delicious.
So for the next night, I was actually using up leftovers to make this sweet as honey stir fry. Totally made this up. It's not an actual recipe, but I just took the leftovers from that sweet as honey chicken and turned it into a stir fry. So I am just chopping up the veggies that we happen to have on hand. So I am using a orange bell pepper, and then I'm also using some broccoli, but you can really use whatever vegetables that you like. And then I had all of this leftover chicken from the night before. This ended up being just one chicken breast, but it's cut in half, like you saw in the recipe before. But I am just cutting this up into smaller pieces to put into the stir fry. And then to go with the stir fry, I obviously needed to make some rice. So I am just cooking up some jasmine rice and following the directions on the back of that. And then while your rice is cooking, you're just gonna stir fry up your vegetables. So I just heated up a little bit of oil and then put it on medium heat. And I did season them with a little bit of salt, pepper, and garlic powder. If you guys have been watching me a while, you know I love my garlic powder, but you're just gonna go ahead and stir fry these for probably about five minutes, I would say I do, just until they're a little bit softer. I do not like my veggies overcooked. You can definitely cook them longer if you like, but it is whatever you prefer. I did add in some extra olive oil before adding in my chicken. I just felt like the vegetables needed that little bit of extra in the pan. And then I just went ahead and added that chicken that I had cut up already. You do want to add the sauce that was left over that we made the night before. This is so good. This dish reminds me of what you would get at a Chinese restaurant. It has that same flavor. And if you're trying to go low carb, you could totally eat it just like this and skip the rice. And it would be just as as delicious. I did decide to add in those leftover green beans from the night before just to get them used up and I felt like it really complemented the stir fry really really well. But you're just going to make sure that this all gets heated through that your vegetables are cooked enough and that your chicken is all the way heated up. I am just adding this stir fry mixture right over the rice with just a little drizzle of soy sauce and it was absolutely perfect. This next meal is a sweet potato skillet. It is really good and also very, very healthy for you, so that is great. But you are just going to start off by peeling two sweet potatoes. I seriously loathe peeling potatoes of any kind, but especially sweet potatoes. And then you're just going to be chopping these up. I will say be very careful and make sure that you have a really sharp knife when you're dealing with these. Sweet potatoes are seriously so hard to cut, so you just wanna be careful to not cut yourself. But you're gonna cut these up into quarter inch cubes, about half inch cubes, somewhere in there. But you're just gonna get them all chopped up and set them aside for when you're ready for them. And 
then you're also going to need a yellow bell pepper for this meal so go ahead and get that chopped up and set aside I do always like to prep my veggies before I start cooking just because I feel like it gets so chaotic with the kids and the cooking if I don't have my veggies prepped ahead of time And then you'll also need a small onion. I am just using a yellow one, which is our personal favorite. As you can see, my toddler is sitting there begging me for onion. I have no idea why, but he seriously loves raw onion. I think it is so weird for a toddler. Is, does anyone else's kid do this or is it just mine? I don't know. You're gonna start by adding in some olive oil and some minced garlic and letting that heat up for a minute or so. And then I'm just going to be adding in one pound of ground turkey. So mine was already cooked. I had it ready to go in my freezer, but you could definitely just cook it right here as well and that would work just fine. For seasonings, I am using one heaping tablespoon of ground cumin. And then I'm also using one teaspoon of chili powder. It's not too spicy, I promise. And then for salt, I am using half a teaspoon of salt and a quarter teaspoon of pepper. And then you're just gonna combine all of that and make sure that it's all mixed together. And then you're gonna be adding in your bell pepper and your onion, and you're gonna be letting that soften for just a couple of minutes. Once your onions and peppers are softened a bit, you're just gonna go ahead and add in your sweet potatoes. So like I mentioned, this is two sweet potatoes that are chopped and peeled. So you're gonna add that in and then you're also add a half a cup of water. This is just gonna help steam those sweet potatoes. You may need to add more throughout the cooking process and I did. I probably added probably about three quarters of a cup of water total, but you're just going to cover it up with the lid and let it cook for the recipe said eight minutes but honestly I cooked mine for probably at least 15 minutes and then you're just gonna put a little bit of mozzarella cheese on top let it melt and that is it for this really delicious and pretty healthy dish to go with our sweet potato skillet, I am just making some garlic bread. This is how I always make our garlic bread. It's super budget friendly to do it this way. I keep a loaf of Italian bread from Walmart in our freezer. And it's actually really easy to do this because it makes it easier to spread the butter on. I am just using the Smart Balance, but when you try and spread this on the bread when it's not frozen, it just kind of smushes the bread. But when the bread is frozen, it is so much easier. So I definitely recommend trying that because for our family, one loaf will last us probably four different meals at least and the loaf is only a dollar to begin with, so it's super budget friendly. And then I am just sprinkling a little bit of this Lowry's garlic salt right on top, and I'm gonna throw that in the oven at 400 degrees for about 10 minutes. And then the last meal is a tuna noodle casserole. This is my husband's favorite. It's seriously, like he loves this and it's so easy so I don't mind making it at all. But I am just starting by chopping up the vegetables as always. I used about three stalks of celery and then I also had half of an onion in our fridge to use up. So I am just chopping that up into a little bit smaller pieces as well. You're gonna add some olive oil to your pan and then you'll just saute these veggies over a medium heat. I did add a little bit of salt and pepper. I would say I cook them for about five minutes until they're a little bit soft. And then while your veggies are cooking, you're gonna get a pot of water boiling. And then once it's boiling, go ahead and add in your noodles. I am using elbow noodles, which is what I always use, but you really could use any pasta that you prefer.
Once your veggies are all the way cooked through, you're gonna be adding in two cans of cream of chicken. You're also gonna need some salt, pepper, and garlic powder to taste. Totally up to you. You could definitely add some extra seasonings if you would like. And then for the meat for this noodle salad, like I mentioned, it is tuna. But I will say you can make this exactly the same way and just use cubed or shredded chicken. So if you don't like tuna, I know not everyone does, you can definitely make the same exact recipe with just a little bit of chicken. And then I do add a little splash of milk as well just to thin out that sauce a little bit. Mix it together, get it heated all the way through, and then you're just going to combine it with the noodles when it's all done. You're going to want to spray your baking dish and then you're going to be adding in half of the mixture. This is my little secret. I love to put a little layer of shredded cheese in the middle. I feel like it just adds a little something and I don't even put that much. I just do a really thin layer but it seriously makes it taste so so good. So I like to do it in two layers almost like a lasagna and it's so much better this way. It just adds a little something and then you'll top it with a little bit more shredded cheese. Cover it up with aluminum foil and then you're going to put this in a 350 degree oven for about 25 minutes. You just want to make sure that everything is nice and heated through and that the cheese is melted on top. Well, that wraps up this what's for dinner video. I hope that you enjoyed it and that it gave you some meal ideas and inspiration for your own week. Go ahead and comment down below and let me know a new meal idea that you are looking forward to trying this week. I would love to hear from you guys, but that is it for this video. Go ahead and subscribe, give this video a thumbs up, and I will see you guys next time. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.